The power law tells us if we want to calculate the derivative of a function of the form x to the n, it just comes out to be n times x to the n minus 1. For example, if we want to calculate the derivative of x to the fifth, it would just be 5 times x to the fourth. It also lets us calculate the derivative of the square root of x. Because the square root of x is secretly just x to the one-half power. So if we want to calculate its derivative, it would come out to be the one-half, would just drop out front, and you'd be left with x to one less, n, n minus one. So subtracting one from the one-half, you get minus one-half, which is the same thing as one over two, x to the minus puts the x on bottom, and it's x to the one-half on bottom, or square root of x. But what if we wanted to calculate something like the derivative of x to the fifth plus the square root of x? Now it's no longer of this form. It's not just x to some power, but it's x to some power plus x to another power. What do we do? In order to figure out how to do this kind of problem, let's come back and ask in general, how do we find the derivative of f of x plus g of x? And let's plug it into the derivative definition, the limit as h goes to 0 of plug in x plus h, that becomes f of x plus h plus g of x plus h, minus plug in the x, which just gives you f of x plus g of x, all over h. But notice, since you are subtracting the whole piece f of x plus g of x, that's the same as subtracting f of x and then subtracting g of x. We can rearrange the terms to get the limit as h goes to 0 of, on top, f of x plus h minus the f of x plus f of x plus h. I'm sorry, we've done the f of x plus h, now we need to do the g of x plus h minus the g of x. Just took these four terms and rearranged them. Then we want to divide the whole thing by h, which is the same as just dividing the first piece by h, and then dividing the second piece by h. But what is this? Notice this first expression here is just, as you take the limit as h goes to 0, it just becomes the derivative of f at x. And this second piece is just the derivative of g at x. So you end up with, the derivative of f plus g is the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. For our example, that tells us if we want to calculate the derivative of x to the fifth plus the square root of x, it's just going to be the derivative of the first piece, which is 5x to the fourth plus the derivative of the second piece which we found was 1 over 2 square roots of x. We're almost there. We can almost now find the derivative of any polynomial. Given a polynomial like, like, like x squared plus 3x plus 7, we can say, well, we know the derivative of this is just going to be the derivative of each of its pieces. But wait a second, this second piece isn't just x to some power, this second piece is 3 times a power of x, 3 times x. What do you do when you have a constant in front of your function? Let's come back over here and think about what happens when you have a constant in front of some function. Well, using our limit definition again, we can see that's just the limit as h goes to 0, 
of your constant times f with x plus h plugged in minus your constant times f with x plugged in all over h. But notice, since both these terms on top have that constant c, we can pull the constant out. You could pull the constant out from your limit using your limit law, giving you it's the constant times your limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That is just your constant times. This is just the derivative of f. So when you're calculating the derivative of a constant times a function, you leave the constant the same, and then you calculate the derivative of the function. So for this example, you would calculate, since it's a sum, the derivative of the first piece, which is 2x, plus you leave the constant 3 the same, and you times it by the derivative of the second piece, which is just 1. The derivative of x is just 1 plus the derivative of the last piece. Well, well, 7 is just a constant, and we've already seen the derivative of a constant function, since it's flat, will always just be 0. So that's just 0, leaving you with derivative 2x plus 3.